Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, it's uh, 2.30 and uh, I suppose uh, we can start. Uh, welcome to the third roundtable on uh, Euro uh, risk-free rates. This time uh, done completely remotely in view of the circumstances. Uh, my name is William Leifeld. I'm a press officer at the ECB and uh, also uh, working uh, to support the working group on risk-free rates. And I will try to lead you, guide you through the agenda uh, this afternoon. Just one important thing is we will record uh, the event and uh, we will make it available in the next few days, the entire recording on the uh, working group pages on the ECB website. The focus today will be on Euribor fallback rates and more specifically on the two recently published uh, consultations uh, on that topic. One on Euribor uh, uh, fallback uh, rate trigger events, so what kind of events could trigger the use of fallback rates. And a second one on uh, Euro STR based uh, fallback rates that could be used for, uh, as fallback for, uh, for Euribor. There will be panels on these two topics and uh, following these panels, there will be uh, a Q&A uh, sessions uh, and uh, uh, the audience, so uh, everybody uh, checking in uh, at the moment, will have the option to ask questions. And for this, we have the specific Q&A function in WebEx. And you can find this if you uh, uh, move your mouse a little bit and then uh, Probably the second dot uh, on the right side, the, 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 the button with the three little dots on it. If you click on that, there you will find an option called Q&A. And this will open on your right side a small uh, window, which will enable you to, um, to ask uh, your questions. Uh, before we start with the panels, there will be uh, keynote speeches as uh, shown in the uh, agenda and the uh, keynote speeches will be by Isabel Schnabel, member of the executive board of the ECB, by uh, Tenet uh, Putrakul, Putrakul, uh, CFO of ING and chair of the working group on risk-free rates, by Tilman Luder, head of the securities markets unit FISMA at the European Commission, and by Steven Mayor, the chair of the European Securities and Markets Authority, ESMA. I will now give the floor to Isabel Schnabel for the welcome address. From my side, a warm welcome to the third roundtable of the Industry Working Group on Euro Risk Free Rates. This year has brought unprecedented challenges on many fronts. Not least, it has forced us to transition to virtual modes of working. I very much hope that the public health situation will soon allow us to meet again in person. Despite the challenging circumstances, I am happy to see that so many of you have joined today's virtual event, representing the full range of stakeholders from the private financial and non-financial sectors, as well as the public sector. The working group was established in 2017 to proactively address vulnerabilities related to Aeonia and Euribor, thus following up on the recommendations issued by the Financial Stability Board. Looking back, we can all be proud of the considerable progress that has been made today. Today's roundtable will provide a platform to exchange views on the development of robust fallback provisions for Euribor, which remains a systemically relevant benchmark. Based on two recently released public consultations, we will also consider the role of the ECB's Euro short-term rate, the Euro SCR, in establishing resilient fallback provisions. So why is there a need for robust Euribor fallback provisions? Financial institutions, non-financial institutions and consumers continue to use Euribor as the benchmark for a variety of financial instruments and contracts. The administrator of Euribor, the European Money Markets Institute, 
has been authorized to provide the rate under the hybrid methodology by its current supervisor, the Belgium Financial Services and Markets Authority. As a result, Euribor is still used extensively in both new and legacy contracts for cash and derivatives products. Given that Euribor remains operational, why do we even need to discuss fallback arrangements? Let me answer this question metaphorically. Fallback provisions are like seatbelts. In the improbable event of a car accident, fastened seatbelts substantially reduce the likelihood of injury. Fallback provisions for benchmark rates serve a similar purpose. Many contracts in financial markets make reference to benchmark rates, including the right board. If the benchmark rate ceased to exist, the absence of a forward rate would expose the counterparties to substantial risk. Fallback provisions therefore act as seat belts for contractual arrangements in financial markets. By ensuring the continuity of a contract, robust fallbacks prevent potential losses from materializing. In fact, there is already a legal requirement to use fallback provisions. The EU benchmarks regulation requires all supervised entities to draw up robust plans to mitigate the potential impact of a benchmark being discontinued. We will hear more about the current regulatory and supervisory landscape from the European Commission and the European Securities and Markets Authority, ESMA, later in the session. In addition to these legal requirements, there's also clear financial stability justification to ensure there are workable fallback provisions that reduce contractual uncertainties in the event of the right war ceasing to exist. I assume we can thus all agree that the right war fallback provisions are indeed essential. However, this basic premise begs a more difficult question. What are feasible alternative rates that can be used if a fallback scenario is triggered? In an effort to address this question, the working group has recently launched two public consultations. Stakeholders can contribute to these consultations until the 15th of January 2021. The objectives of the two consultations will be presented and discussed over the course of this roundtable event. The public consultations build on a common theme, namely the use of the ECB's Euro SDR in the proposed fallback measures. For the public consultation, the working group has used two alternative Euro SDR based approaches to approximate a term rate that could serve as a fallback. First, the working group has analyzed the overnight index swap OIS market and proposed a methodology to derive a forward looking term rate. Second, the working group has used realized values of the Euro SDR and compounded them over the interest period, thus deriving a backward looking term rate. The Euro SDR is a suitable rate for use in the RIBOR fallback arrangements. It is designed to meet the IOSCO principles. Moreover, it fulfills the requirements that are deemed essential for a fallback rate. It is robust and reliable. It is simple in construction, and it is determined in a transparent way with a market neutral authority, the ECB acting as administrator. Importantly, the Euro SCR remains available during periods of market dislocation. The market stress observed during the coronavirus pandemic has underscored the relevance of this criterion. At the height of the crisis, Volumes underpinning the Euro SDR increased, in contrast to volumes observed for longer tenors in the unsecured market segment. A high level of liquidity in the unsecured segment is concentrated in the overnight maturity, thus anchoring the Euro SDR based on a large pool of daily transactions. Just a few days ago, the ECB published its first annual review of the methodology used to calculate the Euro SCR. This review confirms 
that the methodology correctly reflects the developments in the overnight unsecured money market and thus appropriately measures the underlying interest. However, despite the apparent qualities of the Euro SDR, progress in adopting it has been rather slow. Since the 2nd of October 2019, the Euro SDR has also determined the level of EONIA. As EONIA has been converted into a Euro SDR tracker rate, the benefits of switching to the Euro SDR may not be immediately obvious. Many market participants continue to rely on EONIA in their derivatives trading, mostly out of habit or a lack of sufficient technical preparedness, while others are hesitant to use the Euro SDR when originating assets. There are two reasons why market participants should urgently work on their preparedness for an orderly transition from EONIA to the Euro SDR. First, the discontinuation of EONIA is imminent with its last publication scheduled for the 3rd of January 2022. Before that date, all EONIA linked contracts or instruments should either be converted into Euro SDR linked equivalents or incorporate workable fallbacks. I urge market participants to actively use the Euro SDR for new contracts in order to ensure a smooth transition from EONIA to the Euro SDR well before the end of 2021. Second, a broader use of the Euro SDR will support the development of common standards and practices, for example, in the origination of assets. If the proposed fallback provisions were ever activated, the market would have to rely extensively on the Euro SCR. A lack of knowledge and experience in using the rate may then hamper market functioning. The ECB will continue to facilitate the replacement of EONIA in euro area markets by maintaining a robust and representative euro SDR. In order to encourage a more widespread use of the euro SDR, and not just as a basis for fallback rates, the ECB is considering publishing compounded euro SDR average rates as well as a compounded index. We will provide further information on these efforts in the coming month. So let me conclude. Resilient fallback provisions for benchmark rates are essential. Fallbacks act as seatbelts by safeguarding continued market functioning during episodes of uncertainty that may affect the future robustness and representativeness of benchmark rates, including Duraibor, which in turn may lead to the benchmark ceasing to exist. The imminent discontinuation of EONIA should be seized as an opportunity for market participants to fasten their seatbelts by linking their contracts to an alternative benchmark rate, the Euro SDR, and thus also supporting the establishment of robust fallback provisions for Euribor in the process. The Euro SDR is an ideal candidate for this transition. It can support market participants in building robust fallback procedures for potential discontinuation of Euribor. Users should therefore swiftly replace EONIA and make wider use of the Euro SDR in cash and derivatives markets. As part of the ongoing efforts to establish resilient Euribor fallback provisions, I encourage all Euribor users to review the working group's public consultation documents and to provide input by the 15th of January 2021. Before giving the floor to Tanate Futrakul, the chair of the working group on Euro free rates, I would like to thank the working group members for their continued efforts during the benchmark reform deliberations and for delivering the two public consultations on Euribor forwards. In particular, I would like to thank Mr. Futrakul, his predecessors, Steven van Reisweig and Kurs Timmermans, and the entire ING team for the unwavering commitment and dedication they have demonstrated in leading the working group. I would also like to thank the ECB team that has been supporting the working group by providing the secretariat. Last but not least, we are very grateful to our colleagues at ESMA, 
the European Commission and the Belgian Financial Services and Markets Authority for their contributions to and support for the benchmark reform process. I now wish all of you an insightful and productive roundtable. Thank you very much for your kind attention.